What's the word, y'all? It's your boy Jay Sites, and in today's tutorial, I'm about to teach y'all how to create this little fire title that you see right here on my screen. For today's tutorial, we're gonna be using Element 3D by Video Copilot. You have to go get it from there some way somehow there's a link in the description but yeah anyway let's get right so let's find a spot in our video where we want to place a title i already kind of have my clip so i'm gonna make a text so let's go up here layer new text and before we do anything to the text let's go grab the mask tool and let's turn on our proportional grid sorry and then let's just make a mask from one end of our text to the next. So I'm going to grab a point right here. And now I'm going to click and drag right here. So I can make a little hump in our curve. You'll see why we're doing this in a second. So hit the text. Let's go to more options. Go to path options. And let's just choose the mask. As you can see, now our text is curving over our J site. So now I'm going to highlight just tutorial. And I'm going to make that just a little bit smaller me and if it looks a little too slanted for you just change the margin and then turn off the grid and you could just uh, grab it to the middle I'm gonna bring my J sites text just a little bit closer because I don't like how far it is from how far the letters are from each other and that's about it all right that's solid so now I'm gonna turn off this text layer and let's add a solid layer let's go to layer new solid and on this solid, I'm going to add element 3D. And before I go into the scene setup, right, I'm going to fiddle with a few options. Let's come down to custom layers. Let's use our footage as a texture map so we can get some reflections. And then let's go to the custom layers and let's choose path one. And let's just choose our text. Mm -hmm. And before we jump into there, I'm going to toggle a few options on in the render settings. So I'm going to come down to render. Then I'm going to open up lighting. Let's change it to cinema. Or 360 whichever one you feel you're gonna you're gonna know which one to choose when we come back from the scene setup then we're gonna come to shadows let's enable the shadows and let's change those to ray trace and for the multi sampling let's change it to eight and let's open up ambient occlusion let's enable AO let's change it from SSAO to ray traced and let's bump the multi sampling to four and the RTAO samples let's bring down Let's bring that down to two and let's have our intensity at 0 0.6 and you'll see why after we finish all right so we have a few settings here let's go into the scene setup and let's start fiddling with our text let's extrude our text and as you can see we got a 3d tutorial my j sites i'm gonna turn off draft textures and now let's go to presets right inside of presets i have a ton of nice textures here you know what i'm saying if you want access to some of these textures you feel me just just hit me up you know i'm more than likely to share some of this stuff because some of this stuff you can't even find on the internet anymore for real but um yeah so let's go to bevels and you know before we choose a texture we're gonna choose a bevel i'd like to go with the caution or i go with the three layer but i'm gonna go with the three layer right now right and now i'm gonna make change a few settings in here for the rear bevel which is the black one you see it's kind of coming through the blue one so i'm just gonna bring the z offset in the negative position because i want this one completely in the back and i'm gonna bring down the bevel depth and then i'm gonna move it closer to my blue layer so now i'm gonna go to the blue layer and let's move this extrusion up so i'm gonna change the offset until it's meeting with the black as is same with the white i'm gonna move in the z offset just so it's in the front and now i'm gonna play with some of my extrusions like for my middle layer i don't want it to be this small so i'm just gonna extrude it just a little more and then on the front layer which is this bevel 2 i'm gonna bring this up the z offset just up a little bit more so now i can choose my textures um the best shaders for you to use are most of the things in the metal tab you know what i'm saying like this is usually self you know like you usually want to pick something that you want i really can't 
I'm not gonna say I can't tell you what's the best because if you get pro shaders too, just know every last one of these textures look great if you utilize them correctly. So I'm just gonna pick a few textures and I'm gonna give you some settings for you to run with. You know what I'm saying? So what I wanna go with, um, what is Tekka doing right now? He's in his room smoking. Um, give me a second while I choose my three textures and then I'm gonna run you through the settings. All right, brothers, so they, these are three textures that I like. I like this, I, I like these, you feel me? This is a little speckle that I get from this uh, this Icom Urban Decay shaders. <laughs> Yo, bro, I got mad shit. But anyway, all right, so in the textures, right? You always wanna come down and you wanna, I like to deal with the, uh, the bumps on my metals, right? So come to the, come here, and I'm gonna change the UV repeats from one to three, just so we get more like, we get we get more quality it might like slow down render times but it's definitely gonna look better you'll see what i'm talking about i also have some carbon fiber back here i was just testing this texture out because i just got this so i'm gonna come down here to the normal i'm gonna bump the normal by three as well as well as the diffuse If I want, I could come back to my metal and let's make sure boost the normal bump. Some of that up. As you can see, it's starting to pop out more. I'm just gonna go like 40, 50%. Same thing with my carbon fiber. Let's bring up the normal. And yeah. All right. So I think I'm ready with this tech. So let's bring this in. Now that this is in here, I'm gonna add a new camera. And let's go to layer, camera settings, and let's just make this focal length 12. Let's make the film size 24 millimeters. And now we can just zoom in and stuff. Mm. Yeah, see, very nice text we got going on here. You feel what I'm saying? You see, we already got the ambient occlusion and everything. So now let me, if you wanna get those reflections, I'm gonna go back in here. Let's go to environment and let's pull our text let's pull our video up in there and let's press okay all right cool so now you want to create a null and just attach the camera to the null then we're gonna go back to the solid and let's go down to group utilities open up create a group null and let's just create one so now we can scale this up any way we want you know what i mean so yeah i'm gonna scale it up right up to here and then i'm gonna use my camera i'm gonna zoom in just a little all right cool so yeah before we do any animations um let's fix this lighting up just a little bit let's come back to the element layer and you see physical environment let's just rotate our physical environment just a little bit you see the flag there now i'm gonna rotate it This is pretty self-explanatory. You just rotate it to your liking. And now you could come down to lighting and you could rotate your, rotate your lights. And let's bring it until all of the lights are to the front and it's getting a little shiny. So maybe on the X position. Oh yeah, that's looking good. So now for some animation, let's go to down to output and let's change the, the full render to draft real quick because this is gonna take up a lot. So, and now I want you to come to your group node and let's just hit the stopwatch on the scale. As you can see, mine is already at 300 because remember we scaled it up before. So let's just bring this to the middle and let's just bring this down to zero and let's highlight those keyframes and hit F9. 
And I like to do things in the speed graph sometimes because the value graph is edgy, you know. Mm -mm -mm. But you go to the speed graph. All right, cool. All right, I'm not gonna add too much rotation. I'm just gonna have one keyframe here and then one keyframe in the end. And my, front, my first keyframe, I'm gonna have it in the positives and the last one I'm probably gonna have towards the negatives. Let's close some of these layers because it's getting a little too um, sloppy up here. Let's go to group one and let's go to particle look and let's enable multi object. And when you get into multi object, let's uh, let's do I want to do the letters, right? So I want to make the letters spin. I'm going to displace them and I'm going to rotate them randomly. Well, I'm going to make a keyframe for these two in the middle of my timeline. And then in the beginning, I'm going to rotate them to a negative value. Now let's bring those keyframes back. And let's stretch them out and let's easy ease those things too. And I'm not liking how this animate this rotation is looking, so I'm gonna change it once again. Yeah, I'm just gonna take the rotation. I don't know, I don't want it. But if you wanna make it twist or you wanna do anything else to it, you come down to twist enable and if you remember this from my last tutorial you could just hit stopwatch on the x frame that's on zero in the middle and just let's go back 250 degrees and let's see how this looks when we bring it all the way out and now i'm gonna make a keyframe on transform real quick and let's move this keyframe to the middle and let's just zoom out just a little bit because I don't want this to be cutting frame when it's getting bigger. So I'm gonna change this to the speed graph. I like those keyframes and fix that up real quick. As you see, my text gets closer to each other and it just brings the letters just a little closer. So now, we, since we have the multi-object enabled, we can just hit the stopwatch on size. And let's just hit zero at the end. So now I can bring some of these keyframes back as far as when it leaves the scene. All right, so now you could come back down and let's turn this from draft back to full render. And now let's add some lights. Go to layer, new, light, spotlight, and let's make the intensity like 170. I don't know. Let's see what we about to get. All right, cool. Let's move this light backwards. And now let's add one more light, new, light. I like to do ambient lights. Let's make the ambient light like 60%. And if you feel like the ambient light is not bright enough, just bring it up some. And now if you haven't tried this, add a new light, add an environment light. You can enhance the intensity of the environment light and the environment light will give you some more, um, some more details, but it looks better when you actually have like the clip as an actual HDRI and then you have the ambient, the environment light over it. So I'm not going to use that this time, but just know that that environment light is definitely one of those. I'm going to show you guys something to kind of give you more shadows and like more quality out of your Element 3D renders. You see, I already have my animation and stuff. Um, and before I do that, let's just add a optical glow. Click extreme make it unmalt and we just up the highlights a little bit gang feel me and let's bring up the size and let's bring down the amount so i would like it feel me all right so real quick before we before we go right we got some lights we got some glow in there and also we're gonna add some rsmb 
and this rsmb shit always makes me run so damn slow so i'm gonna make this 0 0.2 something pretty like that and now real quick real quick let's get closer let's zoom in i guess as you can see these textures is getting pretty high quality over here brothers look at that carbon look at, look, look at the steel over there look at the brush so yeah anyway my little method of getting more shadows out of your text is first of all i'm gonna name this 3d and then i'm gonna duplicate it i'm gonna name this ayo or delete rsmb off your um, ambient occlusion and your optical glow and then go to output hit the drop down and let's change composite to ambient occlusion and now it's going to give you a white screen let me go to my camera and delete this keyframe real quick so now it gives you a white screen and all you want to do on that ambient occlusion layer is change it from uh from normal to multiply and if you see when i turn it off we getting more shadows out of my text i ain't gonna lie i really like to overkill my pc sometimes when it comes to these jobs so um I would like to I come down to sampling and I change that to 32 and then I change the super sampling to 8. You feel what I'm saying? So now I take that same ambient occlusion layer. <laughs> Y'all about to laugh? I duplicate that bitch. Oh my God, we get some more in there. But then that makes you have to bring your lights up some more. So you have to come to your ambient light and just boost this now, maybe to like 120. But this is jumping out of the scene. So let me move back some get to see what's really going on here yeah this is fire and if you're really dissatisfied with your lighting come down in your element tab and just boost the exposure on the physical environment you feel me all you gotta do is boost that exposure on that physical environment and you should be solid maybe add a little bit of gamma you know what i'm saying but you know me i like orange y'all probably like man this shit don't match so you know what i'm gonna just make it yellow for y'all real quick you know what i'm saying just to you know, I'm gonna make it yellow just to match the scene. Sites loves orange, bro. I'm sorry. You feel what I'm saying? That's just, <laughs> that's me. If you bring this out here, just know we got some pain going on here. You feel what I'm saying? And those textures is looking crazy. But anyway, man, yeah, brothers. Now you got this. And if you enjoyed that tutorial, drop a like, comment, subscribe. And you know, I'm going to be back tomorrow with another one. Grr. Very nice, baby.